Okay guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we will discuss borrowing costs. Okay, other consideration on the self-construction is the what we call borrowing costs. So borrowing costs is another term for interest capitalization under standard IES 23. So if we say borrowing costs, it is the cost of borrowing. So meaning, ito po yung cost na may incur natin in case we borrowed money from the bank or from someone else or what we call the cost of debt or interest expense. Normally, we record interest, interest as interest expense once incurred. However, if the borrowing is directly related to the self-construction of an asset, that borrowing cost must be capitalized. So, ito po yung mga consideration para masabi natin na yung interest expense must be capitalized. So, number one, it incurs expenditure for the asset. So, meaning yung perang inutang natin sa banko or from someone else is actually used to the construction of a specific asset. At the same time, we incur borrowing costs, which is actually yun nga, yung perang inutang natin, that it undertakes activities that are necessary to prepare the asset for its intended use. So, instead of debiting interest expense doon sa ating utang, so, ang gagamitin po nating account, kung ano yung account na ginagamit natin for the property, plant, and equipment. Before we proceed to the accounting treatment, so let's first define what is what is borrowing cost. So basically, if we say borrowing cost, ang next step natin is to identify bakit ba tayo umutang sa banko. So kapag meron kasi tayong two types of borrowing, so we have the number one, specific borrowings. If we say specific borrowing, first question, did we, bar did we borrow from the bank specifically for the construction of this asset? If the answer is yes, then the borrowing is considered as specific. So, mutang ka lang kasi mag-create tayo or mag-construct tayo ng asset. For example, building. The number two question, kung umutang ka naman sa banko pero yung inutang mo maraming paggagamitan aside dun sa pag-construct ng asset, consider po siya as general borrowings. So, each borrowing po may kanya-kanya po siya accounting treatment. Kaya, crucial na manaman natin anong klaseng borrowings ba yung ating ginawa specific or general. Okay, so under self-construction, then borrowing cost, umutang tayo sa banko ng pera or we borrowed money from the bank. Then basically, if we consider that as a specific borrowing, so the interest expense involved should be capitalized. However, kung hindi mo pa naman nagagamit lahat ng inutang mo doon, pwede mo siyang invest to some other investing investment vehicles, di ba? Kasi sayang naman, since idle yung cash, so pwede mo siyang invest muna for the meantime hanggat hindi siya ginagamit for the construction. If that's the case, yung interest income na earn natin out of that money should be deducted to the value of the interest expense to be capitalized. So the formula should be actual interest expense ng borrowing cost, then less natin yung actual interest income na earn natin doon sa pera natin, in-invest natin pansamantala, then whatever the remaining amount, that should be the interest to be capitalized natin. Okay, let's have an example for self-construction, interest capitalization under a specific borrowing. So, on January 1, 2020, Leap Company started the construction of its new building. The company follows the policy of capitalizing allowable interest costs. Construction costs were incurred as follows. So, on January 1, 1 1.5 million, April 1, 500,000, June 30, 600,000, September 17, 1 1.5 million, total cost incurred is 4.1 million. Additional information, on January 1, 2020, the company obtained a loan, 3.5 million, at an interest rate of 12%, specifically for the construction of the building. Prior to its disbursement, the loan was temporarily invested and earned an interest income of 70,000. Since the loan was specifically borrowed for the construction of, of this building, therefore, we have to follow the borrowing cost under a specific borrowing. Under a specific borrowing, the computation should look like this. Then, recognize natin yung interest expense involved. Then, ilest natin yung interest income earned para makuha natin yung interest to be capitalized. So, sa case natin, the interest expense incurred is 420000 computed as follows. 3.5 million, the amount of the loan, times 12% the interest rate, times 12 over 12, since January 1 siya na obtained, then divided by 12 months. Then, deduct natin yung interest income earned, which is 70,000, given naman siya sa ilalim. So, the interest to be capitalized is 350,000. So, to record the transaction simply, debit interest expense, 420,000, 
then credit interest payable for 120,000. So hindi po ganito yung entry na gagawin nyo kasi nga, we have to follow the road, the borrowing cost. So since specific yung borrowing, we should not use interest expense. Instead, we have to use a capitalizable account or capitalizable expense. So sa case natin, instead of using interest expense, the right account title should be building kasi building yung kinoconstruct natin. So ang tamang entry talaga dapat ay debit building for 120,000. Then credit interest payable for 120,000. Credit mo sa cash pag binayaran mo na agad siya. Pero ang assumption kasi natin hindi pa bayad. So credit lang tayo muna ng interest payable. So for the interest income naman, the right, the, ang entry naman natin, kung hindi siya capitalizable, ito yung entry. So debit interest receivable, 70,000. Then credit interest income, 70,000. However, since capitalizable po ang ating interest, yung interest income natin na credit ay dapat hindi siya interest income. The account should be building 70,000 pesos. So, ganyan po yung entry kapag specific borrowing. As you can see, with debit building 420,000, then credit building 70,000. So, the net amount to be capitalized is the 350,000 pesos. Okay, under general borrowings, so, iba po yung ating computation. It is a general borrowings, umutang tayo sa banko, pero mat Yung perang kinuha natin sa banko, maraming paggagamitan. Isa lang doon yung gagamitin natin for the construction of the asset. If that's the case, not all interest expense should be capitalized. So, ito po yung ating considerations. So, kailangan po nating pili and lower between the actual interest expense and compute, compute natin yung weighted average expenditure multiplied by weighted average rate. So, basically, kapag general borrowings, we have to determine the weighted average expenditure at the same time, the weighted average rate. Okay, under general borrowings, requirement na makuha natin yung weighted average expenditure at the same time, the weighted average rate. So, to get the weighted average expenditure, simply, uh, i-compute lang po natin yung months use nun sa ating expenditures. So, let's have an example. So, to get the weighted average, example natin yung last time. So, sabi doon, January 1, ang cost incurred natin is 1.5 million. Then, April 1, we have 500,000. Then, June 30, we have 600,000. And, September 17, 1.5 million. So, to get the weighted average, simply multiply the average cost times the month's use. For example, since January 1, nagastos tayo ng 1.5, 12 baht siya nagamit. So, 1.5 times 12 over 12. Then, for April 1 naman, ganun din, 500,000. Since April to December, 9 months na lang yun. So, 500 times 9 over 12, and so on and so forth. So, pagdating naman ng June, 600,000 times 6 over 12, kasi mag-start tayo ng count, July 1. July 1 to December 31, we have 6 months, so 6 over 12. Then, for September 17, 1.5 million. So, dahil September 17 na yan, middle of the month na. So, ang mas magandang assumption yan, kunya, uh, ang basis natin as if nangyari yung borrowings ng October 1. If that's the case, dahil October 1, so meron na lang 3 months na natitira, so 1.5 million times 3 over 12. So ang lalabas nun dito, weighted average, for January 1, we have 1.5 million, April 1, 375, June 30, we have 300, September 17, 375. So yung total average expenditure natin is 2,550,000 pesos. So pag nakuha na natin yung weighted average, ita times lang po natin yan sa weighted rate naman. To get the weighted rate, simply get the total interest cost incurred on general borrowings, then di-divide nyo lang po sa total borrowings. Then pag nakuha nyo na yan, multiply lang natin dun sa uh, weighted average expenditure. So, okay, so let's have an example in case the borrowing is general. So, same problem tayo. So, on January 1, 2020, Leap Company started the construction of its new building. The company follows the policy of capitalizing allowable interest costs. Construction costs were incurred as follows. January 1, 1 1.5 million. April 1, 500. June 30, 600. September 17, 1.5 million. Total, 4.1. On January 1, 2020, Leap had the following general borrowings which were used to finance the construction of the building. So, meron daw tayong 10% bank loan, 2 million. Then, we have 12% long-term loan, 1.5 million. So, dahil general borrowing siyan, so, basically, we have to get the lower between the actual cost 
the actual interest cost or the lower between the weighted average. So, compute muna natin yung letter A. So, lower between letter A and letter B. So, yung letter A, ito yung actual interest cost natin. So, computed as follows. Then, the first loan was 10%. So, 10% times 2 million times 12 over 12. Kasi January 1 pa lang, nasa kanya na yan. So, ang answer doon, 200,000. Then, the second loan, which is the long-term loan, 12% times 1.5 million times 12 over 12. So, meron tayong 180,000. So, total interest cost natin is actual ay 380, 200 para sa first loan, then 180 para sa second loan. Then, check natin yung pangalawang consideration, which is the weighted average expenditure. So, to get the weighted average expenditure, we, which we already computed last time, so, ang nakompute natin nun ay 2,550,000 pesos. So, ito yan. So, 2,550,000 pesos, iniisa-isa natin kanina yan. So, since meron lang tayong weighted average expenditure, let's now compute for the weighted average rate. So, to get the weighted average rate, simply compute the total actual interest expense, which is 380, divided by the total borrowings, general borrowings. Sa case natin, we have 2 million, at the same time, we have 1.5. Therefore, 2 plus 1.5, so we have 3.5 million. So, 380 divided by 3.5, ang ating weighted average rate should be 10.86%. So, multiply lang natin yan, 2,550,000 times 10.86%, makuha po natin yung weighted average interest na 276,930. Then, sabi natin kanina, kukuhain po natin yung lower between the actual interest cost then the weighted interest cost. So, sa case natin, mas mababa si letter B. So, therefore, siya yung ating magiging interest to be capitalized. Okay, to journalize the transaction, basically, the computed interest must be capitalized or other part will be expense outright. Sa case natin, the amount to be capitalized is 276,930 na nakompute natin kanina. So, 276,930 will be capitalized. Then, the remaining amount, which is 103,760, will be expense outright. So, 380 minus 276,930, kaya po nakuha yung 103,070. So, kapag nirecord po natin yan sa libro, ganito po dapat ang ating entry. So, debit tayo ng building, 276,930, which represents the capitalizable interest expense natin. So, debit tayo building, 276,930. And debit interest expense, 103,760, kasi nga, expense outright yan. Then, credit tayo ng interest payable para sa total interest incurred natin. So, basically, ang ginagawa lang po na dito, dahil general borrowings yan, Yung iba ginamit sa construction ng building, yung iba naman ginamit doon sa ibang mga bagay. For example, operational expenses. So sa case natin, yung ginamit mo sa building, ang amount noon 276,930. Yung 103,760, ito naman yung pinanggamitan mo sa ibang mga expenses natin. Kaya, yung amount na yan should be expense outright. Okay, what if naman combination ng specific borrowing tapos general borrowing? So what will be the accounting treatment? So let's assume the same problem. So, may mga bagong changes lang, di ba? So, on January 1, 2020, Leaf Company started the construction of its new building. The company follows the policy of capitalizing allowable interest costs. Construction costs were incurred as follows. Parehas lang kanina. Then, on January 1, 2020, the company obtained a loan, 1.5 million, at an interest rate of 12%, specifically for the construction of the building. Prior to its disbursement, the loan was temporarily invested and earned interest income of 70,000. So at the same time, on January 1, 2020, LIF had the following general borrowings which were used to finance the construction of the building. So meron tayong bank loan, 2 million, and long-term loan, 1.5 million, 10% and 12% respectively. If that's the case, since present yung dalawang borrowings, ang gagawin nyo lang po muna is to compute the average expenditure natin which was we already computed earlier, which is uh, average expenditure Ilalas lang po natin yung specific borrowings. Then, whatever the remaining amount, ayun yung mapupunta sa ating general borrowings. So, sa example po natin, ang average expenditure natin na na-compute natin kanina ay 2,550,000. Ilalas lang natin yung para sa specific borrowings. Sa case natin, 1.5 million na lang. So, therefore, yung amount na dedicated sa general borrowing is 1,050,000. So, once na na-separate na natin si specific at si general borrowings, punta na tayo dun sa normal procedures natin. 
to compute for the capitalizable interest, so since na-compute na natin kanina yung specific tsaka general borrowings, uh, average expenditure, 2,550,000, less natin yung specific borrowing na 1.5, yung general borrowing is 1,050,000 pesos. So, meron na tayong specific, so pwede na natin makompute yung capitalizable interest niyan. So, basically, specific, 1.5 million times 12% times 12 over 12. So, the capitalizable interest under a specific borrowing is 180,000 pesos. So, now let's compute naman for the general. So, sa general borrowings, lower between letter A and B. Yung letter A, this is the actual interest. So, meron kanina, na-compute na natin yan. So, 10% times 2 million times 12 over 12, we have 200,000. 12 million times 1.5 million times 12 over 12, we have 180,000. So, ang total actual interest on general borrowings is 380,000 for letter A. For letter B naman, which is the weighted average, so, ang gagamitin na natin is 1 million 50 pesos kasi ito na lang yung natira, dedicated para sa general borrowings. So, if that's the case, Weighted average for general borrowing, 1,050,000 pesos. Multiply from the weighted average rate, which we computed earlier, which is 10.86%. So, multiply lang natin. The answer will be 114,030 pesos. Since 114,030 pesos is lower compared sa 380,000, so yung 114 yung ating magiging capitalizable expense under general borrowings. So, meron na tayong specific, 180. Meron na tayong general, 114 and 30 pesos. Then, we just need to deduct the interest income earned from the specific borrowing, which is 70,000. So, therefore, the capitalizable interest sa specific and general borrowing will be 224,000 and 30 pesos. Okay, so to journalize the transaction, so basically, this is the computation. So, for the specific, normal lang. So, debit tayo ng building, 180,000. Then, credit tayo ng interest payable or kaya naman ng cash, 180,000. Then, we also need to debit interest receivable or debit cash for the interest income earned, 70,000. Then, credit building, 70,000. Kasi nga, kailangan natin bawasan yung value ng ating building. Then, for the general naman po, since ito yung ating computed based dun sa kanilang general borrowings, so yung 380, babasagin po ulit natin yan sa dalawa. Yung isa mapupunta sa ating building, yung isa mapupunta sa ating interest expense. So this should be the journal entry. So debit building, 114,030 yung ating interest expense to be capitalized under general borrowing. Then debit interest expense para sa remaining amount, 265,970 and credit interest payable or cash para sa total amount interest incurred on general borrowings. So, basically, kung i-check nyo po, yung nag-debit tayo ng building 180, nag-credit tayo ng building ng 70, tapos nag-debit tayo ng 114 sa return fee. So, therefore, the total amount capitalized under building is 224,030, which is the cost that we capitalize under borrowing cost. So, ay lang po yung mga kailangan natin consider under borrowing cost. Unless otherwise, meron po kayong naisip. So, you are free to comment down below para ma-explain natin in case hindi natin explain this sa, sa presentation natin ngayon. So, okay po.